First things first, let's tackle the core of special relativity, which rests on two main postulates. Firstly, the laws of physics are constant in all inertial frames. This means whether you're chilling on your couch or cruising in a spaceship, physics work the same way. Secondly, and perhaps more famously, the speed of light in a vacuum is constant for all observers, no matter how fast you're moving towards or away from it. This, folks, is a game changer because it implies that the measurements of time and space are not absolute, but relative. Time dilation, for instance, means that time can slow down the faster you move. Imagine running so fast that your watch ticks slower than your friends who's sitting still. Then there's length contraction. This means if you could travel at near light speeds, your spaceship would actually contract in length from the viewpoint of someone watching from Earth. These ideas are not just theoretical, They've been proven by experiments, like the observation of particles called muons. These particles, formed high in the atmosphere by cosmic rays, should decay rapidly and not reach Earth's surface. But thanks to time dilation, they do. So while special relativity might seem like the stuff of science fiction, it's incredibly real and tested. It's essential for technology like GPS satellites which need precise timing calculations that account for these relativistic effects to be accurate. Remember, special relativity is special because it applies when gravity isn't strong enough to matter, which is why Einstein later developed general relativity for more gravity-packed scenarios. Yet in the cosmos of high speeds and vast distances, special relativity helps us make sense of our incredible universe. Einstein's special relativity isn't just about science, it's about expanding our horizons and understanding the deeper truths of the cosmos. Remember, the universe is a strange and wonderful place, and the more we learn, the more miraculous it seems. Now that we've introduced Einstein's special relativity, let's delve deeper into the very foundations of this groundbreaking theory. Einstein discerned two fundamental propositions that seem to be the most assured, regardless of the exact validity of the then known laws of either mechanics or electrodynamics. These propositions were the constancy of the speed of light in vacuum and the independence of physical laws from the choice of inertial system. In his initial presentation of special relativity in 1905, Einstein expressed these postulates as follows. The principle of relativity, the laws by which the states of physical systems undergo change, are not affected. Whether these changes of state be referred to one or another of two systems in uniform translatory motion relative to each other. And the principle of invariant light speed light is always propagated in empty space with a definite velocity, denoted as C, which is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body. In simpler terms, this means that light in a vacuum travels at a constant speed regardless of the motion of its source. This constancy was motivated by Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism and the lack of evidence for the luminiferous ether, a hypothetical medium through which light was thought to travel. There is some debate about how much Einstein was influenced by the null result of the Michelson-Morley experiment, which sought to detect the ether but found none. However, this null result helped the notion of the constancy of the speed of light gain widespread and rapid acceptance. The derivation of special relativity depends not only on these two explicit postulates, but also on several implicit assumptions common in almost all theories of physics. These include the isotropy and homogeneity of space and the independence of measuring rods and clocks from their past history. Following Einstein's original presentation, many different sets of postulates have been proposed in various alternative derivations. Yet the most common set remains those employed by Einstein in his original paper. A more mathematical statement of the principle of relativity made later by Einstein introduces the concept of simplicity. If a system of coordinates k is chosen so that, in relation to it, physical laws hold good in their simplest form, the same laws hold good in relation to any other system of coordinates k moving in uniform translation relative to k. Henri Poincaré provided the mathematical framework for relativity theory by proving that Lorentz transformations are a subset of his Poincaré group of symmetry transformations. Einstein later derived these transformations from his axioms. Many of Einstein's papers present derivations of the Lorentz transformation based on these two principles. 
We've journeyed through the foundations of special relativity, and now it's time to explore how this groundbreaking theory intersects with the equally fascinating realm of quantum mechanics. Special relativity can be combined with quantum mechanics to form what we know as relativistic quantum mechanics and quantum electrodynamics. However, the quest to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics remains one of the most profound unsolved problems in physics. This unification, often referred to as quantum gravity or a theory of everything, is a vibrant and ongoing area of theoretical research. Let's take a step back in time to the early 20th century. The Bohr-Sommerfeld atomic model was an early attempt to explain the fine structure of alkali metal atoms by incorporating both special relativity and the nascent principles of quantum mechanics. Fast forward to 1928 and we meet Paul Dirac, a pioneering physicist who constructed a groundbreaking relativistic wave equation now known as the Dirac equation. This equation was a marvel, fully compatible with both special relativity and the matured quantum theory of the time. It described the intrinsic angular momentum of electrons known as spin and even predicted the existence of the electron's antiparticle the positron. The Dirac equation laid the first foundations of relativistic quantum mechanics and provided a deeper understanding of fine structure, which could only be fully explained using special relativity. However, the existence of antiparticles hinted at the limitations of relativistic quantum mechanics for a complete theory of particle interactions. This realization led to the development of quantum field theory, a more comprehensive framework in which particles are interpreted as quantized fields. In this theory, particles can be created and destroyed across space and time, providing a richer and more accurate description of particle interactions. As we continue our journey through the universe's mysteries, remember that the quest for knowledge is never-ending. The unification of general relativity and quantum mechanics might be one of the greatest challenges in physics, but it also holds the promise of unlocking new realms of understanding. Stay curious and keep questioning the world around you.